Today, we are going to explore deeper connections between algebra and geometry and talk about higher dimensional spaces. Suppose we have a plane with a coordinate system. So here we have units on each coordinate axis. Any vector on this coordinate plane can be drawn with the initial point at the origin. And then to this vector, we can assign coordinates by taking the coordinates of its endpoint. So for example, so this vector has x coordinate of 2 and y coordinate of 1. And uh, we're going to write coordinates as columns. So we're going to write 2, 1. So then if we draw another vector, say here is minus 1, we can draw a vector like this, w. So then this vector w has uh, coordinates 1 and negative 1. And the um, 0 vector will have coordinates 0, 0. So this is a vector that uh, connects the origin to itself. A special role here is played by units vectors on the x-axis and y-axis. So we're going to call them E1 and E2. So these are called standard bases. And uh, so it consists of two vectors, E1 and E2. And uh, the vector E1, well, its endpoints has x coordinate 1 and y coordinate 0. So this vector is 1, 0. And uh, the vector E2 has coordinates 0 and 1. We compute coordinates of vectors by constructing a rectangle with sides on the x and y axis here. And um, from the resulting parallelogram rule, we can uh, write that uh, uh, this vector v, which is 2, 1, so this is uh, 2 times e1 plus e2. Right. So here we can see that uh, this projection to x-axis is going to be 2 times e1, and projection to the y-axis is going to be e2. In general, if we have a vector with coordinates a1, a2, then this can be written as a1 times vector e1 plus a2 times e2. Let us now discuss addition of vectors. So if we have one vector a1, a2, and the second vector b1, b2, then uh, to add them, we can write them, the expansions, uh, as linear combinations of basis vectors. So we have a1, e1 plus a2, e2, plus for the second vector we have b1, e1 plus b2, e2. Now if we group things, so we're going to get a1 plus b1, e1 plus a2 plus b2, times e2. And now we can write this back as a column. So this corresponds to the column a1 plus a2, b1 plus b2. So what we see from this calculation is uh, that if we want to add two vectors in uh, the coordinate forms, then we add the coordinates of these uh, vectors component-wise. The same principle applies to multiplication of vectors by scalars. So if we have k times a1, a2, then um, all, we do, all we have to do is to multiply each component of a vector by k. The same ideas apply also to three-dimensional space. Only in three-dimensional space we have uh, three coordinate axes. And for this reason, 
every vector is represented not as a pair of uh, real numbers, but as a triple of real numbers. This approach to vector geometry was put forward by French mathematician and philosopher René Descartes. This approach allows us to leap to higher dimensional spaces, which we are going to do next. Definition. The space Rn is uh, a set of n tuples of uh, real numbers that we write as columns. We write as a1, a2, dot dot dot, an. Where the components of these n tuples belong to R. And uh, with operations, of addition so when we have a1 a2 a n and we add b1 b2 b n then addition is uh, carried out component wise and so we get a new n tuple a1 plus b1 a2 plus B2, An plus Bn. And there is a second operation, multiplication by scalars, K in real numbers. And again, if we multiply an n tuple by k, then we do it in each component. So it's k a1, k a2, k a n. Next, we're going to tie the notion of Rn to solutions of systems of linear equations. Let's consider a system of linear equations with the following augmented matrix. To make our computations easier, I already have taken this matrix in reduced row echelon 4. So here we have three rows, which means that we have three equations. And remember that columns correspond to variables. So our variables are x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, and x6. And here we can identify three pivots. Yeah. So this tells us that uh, the um, variables that correspond to locations of the pivots, so these are leading variables. So the leading variables are x1, x3, and x4. And uh, all other variables are free. So these are x2, x5, and x6. And um, in order to write down the general solution of the system, we express leading variables in terms of free variables. Well, from the first equation, we get that x1 is equal to, so basically we move all free variables to the right-hand side. 6 minus 2x2 plus 3x5 and minus x6. Then from the second equation, we can express x3 as 7 plus 4x5 and there is 0x6. And from uh, the last equation, we can express x4 as 8 plus x5 plus 2x6. Next, we introduce three parameters, one for each free variable. 
So we say x2 is equal to s, x5 is equal to t, and x6 is equal to r. Then we can express uh, leading variables in terms of three parameters using uh, these uh, equations here. So x1 is going to be 6 minus 2s plus 3t minus r. Then x3 is 7 plus 4t. And uh, x4 is 8 plus t plus 2r. This is what we called general parametric solution. Next, we are going to write this general parametric solution in vector form. We take the column of unknowns x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6. So we're going to denote this as x bar, and uh, we equate this to a vector with components that are our parametric solutions. So for x1, we put 6 minus 2s plus 3t minus r. Then we have s, 7 plus 4t, 8 minus plus t plus 2r, then uh, t and r. Next, we are going to decompose this vector as a sum, where we separate constants and uh, each of the variables. So the contribution of constants is going to be the following vector. We have constant 6 in the first component. In the second component, we have no constant, so we put 0. Then here we put 7, 8, and no constants in the last two components. So this is a constant vector plus a vector with s components. So we have here negative 2s, s, and then no s components in the last four positions. Plus, now we have a vector of t components. So we have 3t, 0, 4t, t, t, and 0. And finally, we have a, a vector of r components, minus r, 0, 0, 2r, 0, and r. So if we add four vectors in the right-hand side, then we will get precisely the vector that corresponds to our general solution. And the last step to do in this calculation is uh, to pull out three parameters as uh, common factors. And then we get, so we don't touch the vector of constants, so it's 6, 0, 7, 8, 0, 0, plus. Now, the second column has a common factor of s. So we write this as s as negative 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. The next vector has a common factor of t. So it's t times 3, 0, 4, 1, 1, 0. And uh, the last vector has a common factor of r, and we have r times minus 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 1. 
This is uh, what is called uh, the general parametric solution of a system of linear equations in a vector form. Next, we are going to study geometric interpretation of uh, these general parametric solutions. Let us consider one linear equation with two unknowns. x minus 2y is equal to 4. So this can be rewritten as uh, y equals x over 2 minus 2. So we see that this is a line with slope 1 half. The y-intercept of this line is negative 2, so we can plot it like this. Now let us solve the same linear equation using our methods. So here we can write the augmented matrix of uh, this system. So here we have one equation, so the augmented matrix will have a single row. So it will be 1, negative 2, and 4. And we can see that this 1 is a pivot. So then we can say that uh, x here is a leading variable, and y is going to be a free variable. So then, to write down the general parametric solution, we assign parameter to the free variable. And then we express the leading variable in terms of this parameter. So this is going to be 4 plus 2t. Next, we write down this um, solution in a vector form. So we write xy is equal to 4 plus 2t and t. So then we separate constants from parameters. So we have a, call, a vector of constants will be 4, 0, plus the vector of parameters will be 2t, t. And finally we pull out t as a common factor. So we get 4, 0, plus t times uh, 2, 1. This is our general parametric solution in vector form. When we assign various values for parameter t, then we obtain all possible solutions of uh, the system of linear equations. Now, let us set t equals 0. In this case, we get a particular solution. So where xy is, uh, well, if t is equal to 0, then this term will disappear, and we just get our vector with constants. So this says that x is equal to 4, y is equal to 0, will satisfy this um, equation. And geometrically, this corresponds to one particular point on uh, this line. So this is the point 4, 0 that um, corresponds to this particular solution. What is interesting to us is the interpretation of this vector 2, 1. So this vector 2, 1 goes along our line here. So, so if we take this vector, then this vector will have coordinates 2, 1. Right? So it's 2 in x direction and y in one direction. So what we see is that this vector is parallel to this line. And uh, the way how we can interpret this uh, general parametric solution in vector form is uh, that we take an initial point, 4, 0, that lies on this line, and then we add to this a multiple of this uh, directing vector 2, 1. So this will be called directing vector here. Right. So if we take the initial point 4, 0 and add any multiple of the directing vector, then we will be moving along the line 
And so this will be the geometric interpretation of this solution. An equation of this form is called the parametric equation of a line. Let's uh, look at one example. So suppose uh, I take a parametric equation like this. So x, y equals 2, 3 plus t times 1 minus 1. So this is a um, parametric equation of another line. So how can we see this uh, new line? So here, so 2, 3 is um, an initial point on this line. So this means that, well, if we set t equals 0, then we see that 2, 3 is uh, part of this uh, equation. And uh, so we mark this point 2, 3 on our plot. And then this vector 1 minus 1 is uh, the directing vector of this line. So this tells us, so if we draw a vector 1 minus 1 with the initial point here, so then this vector will uh, look like this here. And uh, this uh, tells us what's the direction of this line. And uh, so then if we start adding to initial point various multiples, positive and negative, of this directing vector, then uh, what we're going to get is we're going to get this uh, line that uh, goes like, like this. So, so this will be the line uh, which uh, corresponds uh, to this parametric equation. If we have a parametric equation of a line, we can recover non-parametric equation. So how can this be done? So here, let us write for these parametric equations uh, the components. So here, this says that x is equal to 2 plus t, and y is equal to 3 minus t. And uh, all we have to do is we have to eliminate uh, our free parameter t. So from the first equation, we can see that t is equal to x minus 2. And then we substitute this in the second equation, and we get y is equal to 3 minus x minus 2. And uh, this is 5 minus x. So we get um, that non-parametric equation of this line is y equals uh, 5 minus x. Let us look at geometry of uh, two equations now with two unknowns. And we're going to exclude equations of the form 0 times x plus 0 times y e equals constant. Because uh, if this constant is non-zero, then uh, this um, will have no solutions. And if constant is equal to zero, then this equation is completely redundant because every point uh, on a plane will satisfy the equation 0x plus 0y is equal to zero. So we're going to exclude equations uh, like this. So now if we have a system ax plus by, is equal to k1, cx plus dy is equal to k2, then uh, geometrically this corresponds to a pair of lines. Now, there are different cases how this can look like. The generic case, case 1, is when these two lines are not parallel. Right? Then in this case, so one line will be ax plus by is equal to k1, and the second line is cx plus dy is equal to k2. And in this case, we have a, a single point of intersection, so we have a single solution. The second possible case is uh, that these two lines actually may happen to be parallel. Right? So if we have ax plus by 
is equal to k1, cx plus dy is equal to k2. And uh, if these lines are parallel, then uh, here we have no solutions. So this means that we have an inconsistent system. And uh, when we do uh, Gaussian elimination, then uh, as a result, we will get uh, one equation of this form with the non-zero right-hand side. And uh, finally, we have case three. It could happen that both equations represent the same line. So ax plus by is equal to k1 and cx plus dy is equal to k2. So this happens when these two equations are proportional to each other. Then uh, in this case, we have uh, uh, so the set of solution. is a line. And um, it will be, um, so this um, general solution will be of the form uh, something like x0, y0 plus t times uh, c1, c2. Next, we're going to carry out this analysis for equations in three variables. Let's start with a single equation with three unknowns. x plus 2y minus 3z is equal to 5. So this is um, equation of a plane in R3. So let us um, treat it as a system of equations. So here we have a single equation. So when we write down the augmented matrix, we have a single row. So 1, 2, negative 3, and 5. And uh, so here, this 1 is a pivot. So we say that x is a leading variable. And uh, y and z are going to be free variables. So we assign parameters to our free variables. So we say y is equal to s, z is equal to t, and then x from this equation is 5, and then we move uh, the terms with y and z to the other side and substitute uh, for y s and for z t. So we're going to get minus 2 s plus 3 t. Let us uh, write this general parametric solution in vector form. So here we write x, y, and z equals. So we separate constants from each of the variables. So it will be 5, 0, 0 plus s times, so the coefficient in the first position is negative 2, 1, and there is no s in z component, and plus t times uh, 3 in the first component, none in the second, and 1 in the last. So this is uh, the general parametric solution in vector 4. Now, let's give... Um, a um, geometric interpretation of this uh, solution. So in R3, we have uh, so a coordinate system so with x, y, and z axis. And uh, now, so, so 5, 0, 0 here is a particular solution. So this corresponds to setting s equals 0 and t equals 0. So we can mark this point on the graph. Well, in this particular case, it, it lies on z axis. And uh, so then we take uh, these vectors, 
minus 2, 1, 0, and 3, 0, 1 with um, this as initial point. So we'll have two vectors. I'm not going to draw them accurately, just for illustration purposes. And uh, what uh, we see is uh, that we obtain a general solution. If we start at this point and then add to this point some multiple of the first vector and uh, some multiple of the second vector. So these uh, vectors will be called uh, either spanning vectors or directing vectors. So 3, 0, 1. So these are directing vectors. And uh, so we take these two vectors drawn uh, with the uh, initial point at our particular solution, and uh, then these vectors will span a plane sitting in uh, this three-dimensional space. And uh, so this will be a plane of solutions. And uh, so an equation of this form, so this is, uh, will be also called parametric equation of a plane in R3. In the parametric equation of a plane in R3, we have an initial point and two directing vectors with uh, two free parameters. Now, let us look uh, at a system of uh, two equations with three unknowns. So suppose we have uh, a system of equations x plus 2y minus z is equal to 3, and uh, 2x plus 3y minus 2z is equal to 5. Now, let us write down the matrix of this system. So we have 1, 2, minus 1, 3, and 2, 3, minus 2, 5. So we need to do row reduction here. So what we say is um, new row 2 is row 2 minus 2 row 1. So the new matrix will become 1, 2, minus 1, 3, 0 here, 3 minus 4 is negative 1, minus 2 minus uh, negative 2 is 0, and 5 minus 6 is negative 1. And um, so then uh, we can switch the sign in uh, the last row by saying r2 prime is negative r2. So then we get uh, 1, 2, minus 1, 3, 0, 1, 0, 1. And uh, finally, to bring it to a reduced row echelon form, so we say new row 1 is row 1 minus 2 times row 2. And this will give us the matrix 1, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So here we've got two pivots. So this means that um, x and y are going to be leading variables and z is going to be a free variable. So we assign parameter to the free variable. So we said z is equal to t. And uh, then the values of x and y are obtained from these equations. So our first equation says x minus z is equal to 1. So this means that x is equal to 1 plus z, so 1 plus t. And uh, the second equation says that y is uh, equal to 1, so like this. And uh, so this is our general parametric solution. And uh, we write this general parametric solution now in vector form. So general parametric 
solution in uh, vector form. So it looks like this. So we have x, y, z equals, so we just put this as components 1 plus t, 1 t, and then we separate constants from uh, parts with t. So this will be 1, 1, 0 plus t, 0, t. So if we add these two vectors, we're going to get precisely this one. And uh, finally, we pull out uh, three parameters as uh, um, constant multiples. So we get 1, 1, 0 plus t times uh, 1, 0, 1. What is the geometry of this um, parametric equation? So this is a parametric equation of a line in R3. Because uh, what we have here is, uh, so we have an initial point P, which is uh, 1, 1, 0. And we have uh, a directing vector V, which is uh, 1, 0, 1. And uh, so what we do here is uh, we have an initial point to which we add arbitrary multiples of this directing vector. And uh, so then we're going to get a line in a three-dimensional space. So here we have initial point and uh, directing vector. So what is the geometric interpretation of uh, this system of linear equations? So each equation represents a plane in R3. And uh, these two planes have a common line of intersection. So this line of intersection is the solution of uh, the system of linear equations. And uh, what we found here is uh, we found uh, the general solution um, of this system in uh, vector form. So here we found the point on this line and a directing vector v. And uh, so then uh, this uh, uh, line in a parametric form can be written as uh, some point plus t times a directing vector. So here is we have initial point. And uh, here we have directing vector. So let us now discuss uh, possible geometries of uh, three equations with three unknowns. So this means that um, we are going to get a system of equations uh, in R3. And we assume that each equation is a plane. In the first case, we have three planes uh, in general positions. So when two planes intersect, they may have a common line of intersection. And when we intersect this with a third plane, then we are going to get uh, a single point that will belong to all three planes. So this is uh, the generic case. So we have a single solution, which will be P, uh, this, this point. So here, when we write the single solution in a parametric form, there are no parameters. So there is only one solution. In case two, we have three planes that have a common line of intersection. So these uh, three planes may look something like this. And uh, in this case, the general parametric solution will have a form P plus TV. So this will be a line in R3. In the third case, it could happen that all three planes actually represent the same plane. So this happens when uh, all three equations uh, are proportional to each other. So in this case, we will have a general parametric uh, solution of the form P plus TV plus SU. 
and uh, so this is a parametric equation of a plane in R3. It is also possible that uh, we have three planes with no common points of intersection. So for example, this happens when uh, pairwise intersections of planes are lines uh, that are three parallel lines. So in this case, we have no solutions and the system is inconsistent. Next, we would like to talk about high dimensional spaces. So what we want to do is we want to understand things like R4, what it is and how does it look like. Algebraically, so this is a very simple object. So this is a set of vectors with four components. So the real, there is no real difference between R2, R3 of R4. At the time of uh, René Descartes, so people largely ignored objects like this because there was no, simply no use um, for R4 in, um, in that life. Today, we use um, vector spaces of very high dimensions uh, on everyday basis. For example, in digital signal processing, snippets of audio recordings could be vectors in, uh, vectors in R1024, for example. Another application of um, high dimensional spaces is in data science. From the point of view of data analyst uh, working for a large corporation, every customer is a vector in uh, Rn with uh, n being a very high number. Here we just package all possible characteristics of a customer in a long vector. Let us try to visualize R4. This is uh, hard to do because our brain has a lot of experience with dealing with planes and the three-dimensional space, but not R4. In order to understand um, R4 and uh, high-dimensional spaces, it's instructive to see how we can build uh, high-dimensional spaces from the lower-dimensional spaces. Let's take a plane. So on a plane, we can uh, choose a line. And so here we have a plane. And uh, then we take this line and we can stratify the whole plane by a set of parallel lines. Basically, we can think that we have a line and then we start moving in a direction which is uh, perpendicular to this line and shift this line in this new direction. So likewise, when we go to R3, we can start with a plane and then start shifting this plane upwards. And uh, then we get a stratification of uh, R3 with uh, a set of uh, parallel planes. And uh, so we slice up R3 by uh, planes going uh, in the direction perpendicular to this plane. In the same way, we can think that uh, we start with um, the space R3 and uh, then we have to imagine that we take a, a new direction which is perpendicular to all directions in R3 and then we start stacking these three-dimensional worlds next to each other shifting in uh, this uh, new direction and uh, in this way we um, st can stratify four-dimensional space using three-dimensional slices. And uh, when we move from slice to slice, we go in, in the direction which is perpendicular to the three dimensions of R3. Now, it's easy to say that uh, let's start moving in a direction which is perpendicular to all three dimensions uh, of, uh, of this room. Um, so in uh, our everyday life, we do not experience these additional dimensions. But uh, abstractly and mathematically, so we can uh, easily do this. From a uh, physics point of view, one possible interpretation of this new dimension is time. So we can think 
that at each instance of time, we freeze our world. And then when we move the next uh, instance of time, we have a different slice of uh, the three-dimensional world. And these three-dimensional worlds are stacked to each next to each other as we progress uh, in time. Uh, this is uh, one possible interpretation of R4 as space-time. But um, it's not necessary to think that this fourth dimension is necessarily time. So we can just think that this is a fourth additional dimension, which is perpendicular to the three given dimensions uh, of R3. And in fact, uh, string theory in physics predicts uh, that our universe uh, has uh, more than three or four dimensions. So it just predicts that um, our world has either dimension, the uh, number of dimensions in our world is either 26 or alternative um, theories uh, say that it's uh, 10 or some, something else. Now, how can this be? So because clearly in our everyday life, we experience uh, three dimensions of this world. It is conceivable that uh, our world has uh, three gigantic dimensions and uh, several di dimensions that are microscopic. Imagine a bizarre aquarium which has uh, two parallel sides which are sitting next to each other. So this aquarium is uh, fairly narrow but large and extended. And uh, imagine that we place a big fish in this aquarium which is big flat fish. Then this uh, fish can uh, swim around but can never flip in, inside this aquarium. And so for this fish, this uh, world uh, will feel like essentially a two-dimensional world where it can only wobble in uh, the third dimension. But then we place in the same aquarium a little fish uh, that uh, can swim around and experience this aquarium as a fully three-dimensional world. And then for this uh, big fish, the world feels like a two-dimensional world. But for the little fish, this world feels like a three-dimensional world. And uh, so the same could happen in our universe, where elementary particles, being small fish, could experience this universe as a universe with many dimensions. And us, being mi microscopic uh, species, we can only wobble in these extra dimensions and uh, experience this world as a three-dimensional world. Well, this analogy with uh, aquarium is very primitive. So in fact, in, uh, this, um, in string theory, so this universe has no sides and uh, these extra dimensions uh, are twisted and circled uh, upon themselves uh, in, uh, in loops. And, uh, so so they're uh, wound around and so there is uh, no boundary here. So we'll be waiting with excitement uh, for news from uh, physics about uh, what's the true answer, what is the dimension of uh, our world. Unfortunately, string theory is uh, very far away from being tested. So to test string theory, we need to achieve energies uh, many magnitudes uh, higher than uh, we have today in our accelerators.